Okay guys, I'm on chapter 31 of Lemons, and this chapter is titled, Going Down in History. Tobin is a no-show for breakfast again the next morning. This time, my stomach feels all twisted up inside about it too. And after I finish my sticks and seeds and bark, the twisting gets worse, and then sweating starts, and I feel like I might even throw up. Before I leave for the Bigfoot headquarters, I set Rainbow right on top of my pillow, and I pin my name badge to the front of my shirt. It's hot in the garage this morning, and I find Tobin sitting at the desk with green or green receiver in his hand. He doesn't look at me when I open the door. Yes, Mrs. Dicker said, uh-huh. There just never seem to be tracks or prints or anything that we could measure. We're scientists, Mrs. Dickerson. We need concrete proof. Pause. Uh-huh. Yes. But, uh, okay, Mrs. Dickerson. Uh, we'll come out and check it out. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Goodbye. He hangs up the phone and starts writing on his yellow legal pad. Another sighting at Mrs. Dickerson's, I ask? Nothing. Are you still mad? I'm not mad, he says. It seems like you're mad. You think I care what you do, he says, as he scribbles. People come and go. That's life. Best just to accept it. You can do what you want. I could care less. I don't believe you, I tell him. So, he looks up at me with red around the edges of his eyes. Why should I care about that either? He looks away and his chair scrapes on the concrete as he pushes it back from the desk. Come on. Let's go. Wait, there's a message. I point to the machine. The light's blinking. Tobin sits back down and pushes the big square button marked play. Uh, this message is for Lemonade. Lemonade, this is Eliza Rose. Um, yeah. So we had this game of Capture the Flag at our house last night and everything. And, um... We saw something out in our back woods. I'm uh, wondering if you guys want to come out and investigate. You can call me back. Tobin scribbles the phone number on the yellow legal pad. He suddenly looks up at me. Uh, why would Eliza Rose ask for you? And I stare at him wide-eyed. I, uh, I don't, uh. He picks up the receiver and holds it toward me. Do you want to call her back? I know, Mrs. Dickerson, but we never find anything, Tobin complains, holding his case in front of him on her front porch. And we have another call to get to this morning. This time it's different, Mrs. Dickerson tells us with a broad smile. Why is that? Tobin asks. Because, she says, this time I remembered the Polaroid. I gasp and Tobin drops his leather case on his foot. Uh, you did it, he exclaims. I did, she says. Her smile gets even bigger, and her eyes disappear in all her wrinkles. And then she pulls an instant photo out of her apron pocket and holds it out in front of us. Tobin grabs it, and I scramble to get a look over his shoulder. Wow, I whisper, looking at Mrs. Dickerson. Oh, my gosh, it can't be, Tobin breathes. Oh, ye little faith, Mrs. Dickerson sighs. I told you one of these days I'd have proof, and you're looking for. Now, who's hungry? I made M&M cookies. And chocolate marigane clouds. Uh, we've got an eye, Tobin calls out to Charlie when he pushes open the door at Bigfoot Souvenirs and more. An actual eye. And he waves the picture in the air. What's that? Charlie says from the front counter, where he's watching the Phil Donahue show on a small black and white TV set. Uh, Mrs. Dickerson got a picture. Tobin runs over him and holds the photo out. And it's an eye, Charlie. You've got to be kidding me, Charlie exclaims. Look for yourself, I say. It looks like an eye to me, too. Charlie takes the picture and examines it. Tobin pulls his magnifying glass out of his back pocket and hands it to Charlie. Oh, for goodness sake, Charlie mutters, removing his glasses and examining a picture with a magnifying glass. And he passes it back to me. It's not the greatest picture of the universe. Mrs. Dickerson said she shot it through the kitchen window, so there's a glare from the flash on the glass. And it's blurry in spots, for sure. But there's one part that's clear as day. An eye, an actual eye, with a pupil and a brown iris and reddish-brown skin and reddish-brown hair and a snippet of a wrinkled nose. The rest is just blurry reddishness. We better call Professor Malcolm, I say. Bigfoot Detective Zink is gonna go down in history, Tobin blurts out.